an elderly lady was well known to um, or for her faith and for her boldness in talking about it she would stand on the front porch and shout praise the Lord next door to her lived an atheist who would get so angry at her proclamations he would get on the por his porch and shout there ain't no Lord hard times set in on the lady and she prayed to God to send her some assistance she stood on her porch and shouted praise the Lord God I need food I am having a hard time please Lord send me some groceries next morning the lady went out on her porch and noted a large bag of groceries and shouted praise the Lord the neighbor jumped from behind a bush and said aha I told you there was no Lord. I bought those groceries. God didn't. The lady started jumping up and down and clapping her hands and said, Praise the Lord. He not only sent me groceries, but he made the devil pay for them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 starts right out and it says, In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Would you bow your heads? Dear Lord, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to dig into your word this morning, Lord. And we pray that as you impart it to us, Lord, it'll go right into us, Lord, right into our spirits. And it'll be there when we need it, Lord, in doubtful times and any kind of times, Lord. So we ask you to just guide and direct this word in Jesus' name. Amen. So verse 1, Genesis 1, this was the beginning of creation. God had no beginning. He always was. But God created the heavens and the earth. That includes the sun, moon, stars, everything that exists. God created all of it. God owns all of it. Everything began out of the will of God. So he willed it. Everything. Everything you can see and you can touch. He willed it. All of creation came out of the mind of God. Just a thought from him carries more power than the universe can contain. He is omnipotent. All powerful Every power that exists emanates from the mind and the will of God. And then he spoke it. Everything. From the will of God comes the word of God. What he speaks into existence becomes substance. The revealed will of God comes in the form of his word. Let there be, and it was so. And it will always be so. What God's will comes forth as his word becomes reality, and it will always be so. He caused it to be. Everything from his will, through his word, all substance has its genesis. Every molecule of every fiber, of every vapor, of every stone, of every grain of sand, of every ounce of physical substance only exists because of his good and perfect will. Fire, vapor, smoke, gases, plant fibers, protein tissues, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, all come from the will of God. He created all and he owns all. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen are the building blocks of protein of everything that lives. In the book of Genesis, it refers to God as Elohim, which is plural. All three were there from the beginning. Let us make mankind in our image. John chapter 1, the first five verses, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The word comes from the Greek word logos. And it was God. He was with, the God, with God in the beginning. 
Through him were all things made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the beginning. The same beginning as Genesis, the same power, the same omniscience, the same will, the universe exists because he willed it. The planet exists because he willed it. Jesus. Then people came along and contaminated it. That which God created in perfection, that's what, that which God willed, that which God spoke into existence was created perfect. God created existence itself in holy perfection. Creation was all perfect when he created it. Four times in Genesis chapter 1, God saw that it was good. The fifth time in verse 31 says, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. In holiness and in the perfection of God's will, everything was created. Adam and Eve were created with a free will. God's will created them with a free will. He wanted them to love and obey him. God wants us to choose to love and obey him. Without free will, we can't choose to love him. Without free will, we can't choose to obey him. Without free will, we can't yield to the pleading of the Holy Spirit. When he brings conviction to us, we can't choose anything without free will. Our choice to disobey with our free will, beginning with Adam and Eve, was and is what causes creation to groan. In Romans 8, 9, and 19 to 22, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation was, has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. So back to verse 21, speaking of the bondage of versus freedom, the bondage of sin brings us to decay, which is corruption. Our own sin causes us corruption and the ultimate loss of eternity. The freedom of the children of God is that which was purchased by the Son of God and freely given to those who become children of God. Let me, let me read that one more time. The freedom of the children of God is that which was purchased by the Son of God and freely given to those who become children of God. In John 1, 12, it says, it says to, many, to as many as received him, even to those that believed on his name, he gave the power to become children of God. Some people say that everyone's a child of God. They're all God's children. You have to become a child of God. Jesus said you must be born again. You become a child of God. Maybe an infant's a child of God, but we must become a child of God. When, when the Pope says, well, it's okay to bless gay marriage because they're God's children too. No, they are not. They can become God's children, and we hope they will, but they are not. 
you have to become a child of God. His will is that we should come to repentance, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he has been patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That's God's will for us. That will is revealed in the word. His will for everyone. The same will that brought all substance into existence, the very will of God wills for you and me and everyone to be in repentance. But God allows us temporarily to oppose his will. Temporarily because in the end of our time on the planet, we will be subject to his will without any choice on our part at all. Either we did it or we didn't do it. His will versus our own is the age-old conflict. We who are born again, we who have yielded to the will of God, we who are blessed to know where we'll be in eternity have every reason to be thrilled. We're going to move in with God. Jesus calls us friend. We made ourselves enemies of his. But when we repent and receive him, we become his friends. He makes us then his friend. We are the friends of God. We are the friends of God. The same will that formed the universe allows us to will to obey or not. The same word that spoke the universe into existence reveals the love of God to us. The same word that is spoken of in John chapter 1, which was God, brings light into our lives. In a word, we're saved. Praise the Lord. Saved. When we see what God has done for us, we cannot help but praise him. If we don't do that, the stones will cry out. We proclaim how great you are and tell of all the wonderful things you have done. Psalm 75, verse 1. Praise the Lord, all people on earth. Praise his glory and might. First Chronicles 16, 28. God is wise and powerful. Praise him forever and ever, Daniel 2, 20. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. He rescues the oppressed from the power of evil people, Jeremiah 20, 13. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, the free gift he gave us in his dear son, Ephesians 1, 6. And Hebrews 13, 15, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. That's what we do when we come together and sing and worship God. When we see what the Savior has done for us, we have to love him if we believe it. I can remember not believing it, rejecting it, doubting it. I can remember being that way. Praise God. Luke, 20, Luke 10, 27, he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. When we consider the creation that he has spoken into existence, we must worship him. John 4, 23 and 24. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in, the, in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Verse 24, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit 
and in truth. We Pentecostals think that we are worshiping in the spirit that has something to do with tongues. If that were true, only Pentecostals could be his worshipers. It may be true that Pentecostals are the most demonstrative worshipers. When Jesus made this statement, he was talking to the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well. It was a discussion about a comparison between the manner and place of worship of the Samaritans and the manner and place of worship of the Jews. His answer was about true worshipers. The worship in the temple had become corrupt and carnal, not spiritual. His answer was that it was not important where or the ecclesiastical means of worship, but the spirit in which we worship. Verse 24 is required of all that worship uh, God that they worship him in spirit and in truth. We must depend on God's spirit for strength. We must yield our souls to his authority. We must devote our spirits to the service of God. We must worship him with steadfast thought and a heart of affection. Steadfast thought and a heart of affection. We must worship him with all that lies within us. Hebrews 12, 28 to 29. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. Reverence is worship in the spirit as opposed to carnal worship, worship in the flesh. Carnal worship is liturgy. I don't know if you've come out of a church that was a liturgical church. We did. But it's the idea that if you do certain things and repeat certain words, that God will be pleased and will bless you just because you've gone through that, through you, that you've jumped through certain hoops. There's a priest that leads with repeated words, with repeated response from the people. You can be in a service like that without even thinking about what you're doing or saying. It's just repeated, it's vain, rep vain repetition. Just going through the motions is not worshiping in spirit. It is only carnal. I know. We've been there. We've been there. We can, all, we can also be that carnal in our own churches. We can sing songs that we're familiar with and have our minds on something else. There's certain songs that we all, we all know, and you can sing those songs while you're thinking about dinner. You can. We have to focus on our worship. And then it says in, in spirit and in truth, Hebrews 10, 22, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Mindful of the awesome power of our loving God. Mindful of the predicament we as part of mankind found ourselves in. Mindful of the mercy of our loving God. Mindful that God is good and we don't deserve it. Those are things that we have to keep in mind. Brings us to worship. We have a free will choose to yield our will to his will. And the result is eternal life. Hebrews 6, 22 to 23. 
But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do we need any more reason to honor him with our praise, with our worship, and to give him glory in every way? I've laid out the reasons why we worship because of, because of his will and his word starts with the will in the mind of God and the heart of God and it comes through his word. It guides and directs us. Those who don't believe refuse to believe to their doom. Those of us who know the Lord, we've accepted him. How blessed we are. So how can we not worship him? How, how can we worship him with repeated, just repetition and without any emotion? How can we do that? Pentecostal churches we're familiar with, everyone stands in worship. Because of our vintage, it's hard for us to do that. <laughs> this is a church pool of full of people that really can't last that long, including myself. So it's okay. We're not re There's no rule book that says you have to stand through worship, but if you come down to the other church where I minister to the seniors, you will see that they stand through worship. During our worship time down there with them, and that's because they do that every Sunday. All their worship services, they stand because it's more of an expression of their love for God. We're not required to do that. We can be loving God and sit down. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as we don't get complacent about it and just sit there and think, well, I hope this song service is over pretty soon. I hope the sermon's over pretty soon. I hope the, rest, the roast doesn't burn. I hope, you know, if you're thinking about that stuff, then you know, you're not all the way in in worship. Do you want to be all the way in? I didn't hear a single amen right then. Do you want to be all the way in? Do you love the Lord? All right, stand to your feet. I say this all the time. Life is hard, but God is good. God is so good. We come together to worship him, honor him, uh, because he deserves it. Because that's his will for us. That's why we're put on this earth, to worship God. And we will do that in eternity with angel bands forever and ever and ever. It's going to be so amazing. God, you are so amazing. Thank you, Lord, for this church. I ask you to bless this church, Lord. We come under your wings. We come around your hand. We ask for your guidance and direction for this church, Lord. Help us each to do our part to round up more people. Because we each have a mission field, our friends, families co-workers, people we know, people that are hurting. Pray that you'll help us. Give us the boldness, Lord, to speak and to bring them in. There are plenty of them out there, Lord, as you know. So, Lord, we've come together to worship you, to learn about you, to be challenged by your word. And as we go our separate ways, we pray that, you, that you'll just bless each one continue to bless those that aren't here and uh, just bless your people today Lord in Jesus name amen, amen. God is good